Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Danton, and welcome to today's video for Honkai Star Rail. Today, we're going to be talking about a character who has been highly, highly awaited. We're going to be talking about Kafka. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Kafka and whether or not you should pull for Kafka, in my opinion. This is going to be just my personal opinion. Uh, this is meant for those people who are just unsure. Like me personally, I'm pulling for Kafka because I like her kit and I like her design, like her artwork, her just overall design in general. Um, generally, I would say if you just like a character, pull for the character. Pull for who you like, whether you like their design, whether you like their gameplay, pull for who you want. But if you're thinking in a meta sense, that is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about like her kits. We're going to be talking about her skill summaries. Um, theory crafting a bit as well, uh, pros and cons as well. I have a whole image here set for pros and cons. And this is meant to help those of you who are on the fence. I'm sure some of you have already decided you're, bull you're pulling Kafka. I'm sure some of you have decided you're skipping Kafka. And I know a lot of you are like, do I really want Kafka? I don't know. And that's probably why you're here. You're trying to get just that little bit of extra information to try and make a decision. And I'm trying to help you with that. In essence, to put it shortly, too long didn't watch, I feel like you should pull Kafka unless you just don't like DOT gameplay or maybe you have Jing Yuin and you just don't want another lightning character because of things like element saturation and that does kind of suck for MOC. So... I have this little graphic here I've created. I'm trying this out over uh, what I've done in previous videos where I'm gonna give more of a summary for all of the skills, all of, you know, her basics, her, her entire kit basically. And we'll talk about that. So first up with first up with Kafka, what do we have? We got her basic attack, nothing much to say about this, nothing to write home about, it just deals some damage. It does apply shock sometimes, so that does help you get her uh, DOTs off on your enemies, you know, start getting those DOT stack in to get those DOT payouts. But in my opinion, you never really want to do this basic attack. What you do want to do is her next thing, her skill. Um, put simply, cleaves the target doing lightning damage. So, you know, it will damage the target and it'll damage those next to them. Kind of similar to a enhanced um, fire MC attack. And if they have a DOT on them, you know, wind shear, bleed, shock, whatever, they will take some damage equal to a certain percent of their DOT. Pretty good. This is where a lot of her damage is going to come from. Speaking of damage, what do we have next? We have her ultimate, which is big AoE of lightning damage. So, you know, going to do some damage and it applies shock. And if they're already shocked, it's going to damage them all even more. So pretty good ultimate. You know, great AoE here. There's uh this is one of the reasons why she's seeing uh some comparisons to Jing Yuin. I do think while Jing Yuin and Kafka do have overlap because they're both doing some AoE and they're both lightning, I do think they are very different and fulfill very different roles. But we'll still talk about that more when we're talking about pros and cons. Next up, what do we have? We got her talent, which is basically a follow-up uh whenever an allied character attacks. Uh, she will follow up with a basic attack, and this basic attack has a chance to shock the target. Can only be used once a turn, though, so that does kind of suck. Um, since you're not really building crit damage or crit rate, and while you are building attack percent, this follow-up attack is not really pumping out a lot of damage, but it does help you get more DLT stacks on your enemies, which is, in my opinion, I feel like that is going to be the main selling point of her talent. Um, I still do think it is actually worth considering to build around. Not completely build around, but to at least consider it when you're building your Kafka and your teams. Uh, by that, I mean maybe consider adding in some speed boosters or throwing in a little bit of extra speed to try and get more turns. So more follow-ups and more DOT stacks for more skills. That's very skill point hungry, but hey, I find that very fun. And I know a lot of you will find it fun. And lastly, though, for her kit, we have her technique. Um, not really doing anything unique here. Uh, very similar to other K 
character's techniques. She attacks stuff and enters combat that way, and this attack will deal lightning AoE damage, and it has a chance to apply shock, so very good way to enter battle. Just get some nice DOTs on your enemies. Just get that DOT count st stacked up and started. So that is her basic skill summary. Uh, pretty solid for a uh, DOT payoff character, kind of exactly what you want. Um, DOTs have always been kind of a little, until Kafka has come out, DOTs have always been a little bit lacking in the damage department. And in all honesty, in characters too, it's pretty much just Sampo and Serval, really. Um, and both of them were, again, like I said, lacking compared to similar characters or just characters in their elements. You know, comparing Sampo to Dan Hong. Yes, I, again, I know they are both very different with what they're doing, but if you were looking for wind damage, you would usually choose Dan over Sampo. Now with Kafka, we have this whole new avenue opened up to us as players, opening up all kinds of new teams, giving us a lot more variety. So let's actually go and uh, start to dissect this a little bit more. Let's talk about her pros and cons. I got this nice little graphic. Uh, when we're done talking about all the pros and cons, you'll be able to have this here to just look at and analyze yourself and think to yourself like, okay, I like those pros. I like those cons. Let me actually make my decision. So I already mentioned this a little bit. I already talked about it a little bit. Let's talk about her first pro, which I think is the main pro and the main major reason you should pull Kafka, and that is she is the main DOT payoff. I say the main DOT payoff, even though I feel like she is the only DOT payoff, because you could argue there's the nihility path in simulated universe, and you're not necessarily wrong. But I feel like this pro, the fact that she is DOT payoff, is also why she's so good. It's a lot of people look at her just in game right now and they're like, okay, there's Sampo. There's, well, he's not in the game, but there's also Luca soon and Serval. And it's like, yeah, whatever. Like the problem is if another character comes out in the future, you know, whatever, like a burn DOT, a bleed DOT or whatever. And you skipped Kafka, but you like that character for some reason. And you consider playing them. Yeah, you can probably play them, but not having Kafka means the potential of that character is going to be so much lower. So if you do like the DLT payoff, but maybe you don't like Sampo, maybe you don't like Luca, maybe you should still consider pulling Kafka for a future DLT lineup. Because in my opinion, Kafka is similar to Silverwolf in that I don't think we're going to get another character anytime soon that's going to be doing just exactly what Kafka does. Like, we're not going to get another character anytime soon that does what Silverwolf does, which is uh, implant weaknesses. I don't think we're going to get another character that really is going to give a big payoff for DOTs, and that's a big pro. Now, what do we have as our second pro, though? I've been touching on this a bit. Fairly future-proof. Um, again, it's like, you want to build DOTs, right? You're going to need Kafka. I just don't see it. Now, let's say... Let's say they do make another DOT payoff. Let's say they make, I don't even know, there's whatever character. They make some kind of DOT payoff, and now you're like, well, they made another DOT payoff, and she is, and let's say that new DOT payoff is actually better than Kafka. Why not run both? Why not run Kafka and this theoretical second DOT payoff character, and then, especially if that second theoretical DOT payoff character puts DOTs on the enemies, why not run both of them and then your, you know, your support and your sustainer, of course. Or perhaps, you know, you run both of the DOT payoffs, another DOT, so three DOTs, and then your sustainer. Or maybe you want to live risky and not even play a sustainer at all and play a support character instead. So I do think she's fairly future-proof. I know a lot of people always ask this when it comes to characters. How future-proof are they? Do you think they'll get power crept? I don't see Kafka getting power crept anytime soon. In fact, if anything, I see Kafka getting stronger as more characters come out because more and more characters come out means more and more theoretically more and more DOT characters come out and that means hopefully some of those DOT characters will be really strong and we can replace maybe I don't know Sampo or Luca for a really strong potentially really strong five star character I don't know like a five star wind shear wind DOT character or a, I don't know, a, a physical one or a burn one, a fire one. 
So that's why I think she's fairly future proof. Next up, no need for five stars. I was just mentioning five stars, but I like this. Like I've mentioned this in a previous video of mine where she, in my opinion, is fairly free to play because in my opinion, my definition for a free to play character is doesn't need much five star support. Doesn't need much limited character support. On the other hand, we can look at something like Blade. Blade, while he's a good character, he loves five stars. He's loving those Bronyas. He loves those Luolchas. He really likes those five stars with his team. Kafka, yeah, of course she'll like some five stars, but she doesn't need them. You can play like, like the DLTs, the other DLT characters you're playing. Sampo, Luca, Serval, all four stars. Healers, yeah, I guess Luolcha's not bad, but honestly, Luolcha, another problem with Luolcha is imaginary break is kind of bad. So you might say, well, what about Bailu? Yeah, she's a five star, but you can definitely just play Natasha and Natasha would be fine. As for the support, if in case you want to go that Kafka DOT support plus healer team comp, the supports, you have so many options. You got Asta, you got Pella, uh, Tingyun, etc., etc. as your support choices, all of which four stars. Uh, yes, again, like I was saying, you can probably increase your output your damage output would five stars would say like I don't know maybe a silver wolf for defense reductions but you know Pella does that as well um, and as I get again like I said with the healer Bailu's not bad but Bailu compared to Natasha is not in my opinion changing that much so yeah no need for five stars um, while again yes she is going to do better with five stars but I don't think her potential drops that much with only a four star team all four stars besides her of course and our next pro Great with Nihility and Simulator Universe. I just wanted to mention this really quick. Um, a lot of people, you see it now, are complaining about the later, like the last few difficulties of Simulator Universe, especially with the uh, the latest world, World 7, with that deer. Um, and they're struggling to complete some difficulties. Nihility is a really great path for just doing damage. And so is Hunt, of course. But one of the weaknesses of Nihility, in my opinion, is it does want DOTs and... Not many people are bringing Sampo or Serval into uh, Simulated Universe. I feel like Kafka in Simulated Universe with Nihility is going to be clearing stuff really well. So just something I wanted to mention. And our fifth pro, honestly, this is more of a joke, but I feel like I should mention it anyway, because for a lot of people, this is literally the main reason they're pulling Kafka. I'm going to be honest with you, for me as well, it's a very big reason for pulling Kafka. Anime Dami Mommy. Look, I like cute anime girls. That's mainly my main reason for pulling for Kafka. But I also, of course, do like her gameplay. I like the DOT style of gameplay, but, you know, she is a very cute character. Yes, mommy. Now, good pros. You know, main pro being, like, the main DOT payoff, fairly future-proof, and relatively, quote-unquote, free-to-play in that she doesn't need that many five stars. And what about her cons, though? She does have cons. All characters have weaknesses. They all have weaknesses, all have cons, whatever you want to call it, however you want to describe it. Kafka's cons. Uh, honestly, not that many, but there are a few I feel like I should at least mention. First up, needs setup. And what do I mean by this? I mean, you have, it's not like a set it and forget it character. You need to set up your team with her. You definitely need to think like, okay, how am I going to get the DOTs on the enemies? How am I going to... When am I going to use her skill, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. I am overstating this over, uh, just overstating how complex this is. It's not that complex, really. You're just going to, you know, you're going to have your Sampo. You're going to press your skill button. He's going to throw around his dagger and put wind shear on stuff. And then you're going to press Kafka's skill. But you do need that setup. Com and I'm saying this in comparison to other damage dealers. Compare Kafka to, say, like, Zila or... Jing Yuin, like let's especially compared to Jing Yuin because you know lightning damage dealers. Jing Yuin, you press his skill, and then you do whatever else you want to do. You press his skill, he gets more lightning lord stacks, and then lightning lord comes in and just you know smacks your enemy, and you're golden. So maybe if you don't like that idea of having to set up DOTs and then pressing Kafka skill button to get that big boom, basically. Maybe you want to skip on Kafka. I personally think that's really fun. I That's one of the reasons I like Kafka is that setup. So, yeah. I know some of you, though, don't like that. You just want to, like, you just want to slam your 
skill button, slam the ultimate button, you know, with like Zilla and hitting things really hard. But I like this. I like the setup into payoff kind of gameplay. Next up, what do we have? Uh, skill point reliant. I feel like this is something we need to mention. And that is, I feel like Kafka, every time she gets a chance, every time she gets a move, she wants to press her skill button. I think you never want to press her regular basic attack button. Unless, of course, you're out of skill points. Um, or maybe, I guess, if you don't have any DOTs on your opponents, but that goes back to the previous one of the setup, and that means you messed up your setup. But I'm putting this as a con because it theoretically could limit your team comps. Some supports, some other characters, really, healers, supporters, uh, sustainers, whatever you want to call them, they need skill points. You know, a good example, Yukong. Yukong is a good character. Yukong is very skill point hungry. And in my opinion, that's one of the reasons we don't see her as much as, say, I don't know, Ting Yun. Or um, a character I'm considering playing with my Kafka, Asta. I really like Asta, theoretically, on paper with Kafka, because Asta's ult means more speed, more speed means more skills. But Asta is a little skill point uh, hungry, too. Yes, she doesn't need to use her skill point all the time, but I do like to use her skill to get her stacks, you know, try and get multiple breaks on stuff, but... Her basic attack is fine, but it's just something you need to keep in the back of your mind when you're building your team. You're like, okay, how are the skill points going to work? Am I going to, does everyone need skill points? Do, who can who can pass without just having to use their skill? Who can just use their basic attack? And that right there is going to be one of the bigger, more problematic team building problems. Next up for a con, strict team comms. And by this, well, needs DOTs. Yes, you can consider building her as the only DOT character. I don't think that's a bad idea. I'm not saying that's a bad idea in case you're thinking of that, but I really feel like she wants another character who helps put DOTs on there. Whether that's Sampo, Luca, maybe some fire character like Hook. Uh, maybe a support character like Asta who can help with that. But I really feel like this might hurt her a bit with team comms. Between this and the previous point of being skill point reliant. Um, so you're going to need to have all these skill points and the skill point economy management. And then you're going to have to think of how to build your team. Again, I like this. I This to me sounds really fun. Trying to manage my team, trying to manage my skill points, trying to set up that big boom with her skill to do a lot of damage with the DLTs. I know some people don't like that, though. So, yeah, I will have to experiment more, of course, though. Maybe seeing if Kafka by herself is enough. Um, actually, with both of these cons, it's one of the reasons why I'm going to run Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf is very skill point neutral because her basic attack is really strong. And she helps you, um, well, she helps you just manage your skill points that much better. So you can run these more skill point greedy characters if you want and our final con here lots of lightning characters i don't think this is a big con in all honesty i just wanted to mention it similar to the uh Ni greatwood nihility pro there are a lot of lightning characters now just from damage dealers alone we have jinguin and serval and now kafka and you might say that's not that many is it streamer well you're not wrong it's not that many but also if we want to go into non-damage dealers we also have Bai Lu, and we have Ting Yun. And I mentioned this because of things like weakness breaking. If you're in certain pieces of content, you're trying to break weaknesses, and, you know, sometimes you need two teams, and you're like, well, okay, I'll have a Jing Yun on my second team, and or my first team, and my second team is Kafka, but the second enemy sets are not weak to lightning, but I'm using Kafka. That's going to kind of suck. Uh, and this is why I think if you have Jing Yuin, you might want to consider skipping Kafka, unless, of course, you really like Kafka, in which case, go crazy and roll for her. But yeah, like, personally, I would say if you have Jing Yuin, maybe consider skipping Kafka and rolling for, I don't know, Fu Xuin or maybe Jing Liu, I guess, some, upcom some other upcoming character who's not a lightning character, just to have a better elemental spread so you, you know, you're not just like, well, this thing's weak to ice and I don't have any ice character. Or this thing's weak to, I don't know, imaginary and I don't have imaginary. So, you know, maybe roll for Imbibitor, you know, five star Dan instead. 
anyway though that is all those are the pros and cons those are my thoughts on kafka again uh to summarize i love kafka i think she's a really cool and fun character i'm gonna roll for kafka and in general i think you should roll for kafka too however if you just don't like dots if you if this uh set up requirement this uh if the setup requirement thing or just DOT gameplay doesn't attract you, maybe skip. Or if you have a Jing Yuan and you just don't want another lightning character, maybe skip. But I would heavily, heavily incentivize uh, rolling for Kafka. Because, uh, again, Dommy Mommy. And she she just seems really fun from what we've seen of her. Uh, but yeah, I would love to hear what you guys think. Um, do you think there are any other pros and cons that I haven't listed? Uh, I'd love to hear how you guys are going to build Kafka too. Uh, are you going to build, are you going to even just pull Kafka in general? I'd love to hear your opinion. Like, are you going to pull Kafka? Are you not going to pull Kafka? Why or why not? And that's going to be really it. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd love if you could leave a like or a comment down below. And it always helps me out and it always helps out the channel. And if you guys want to keep up with the Honkai Star Rail content, you can always go and subscribe to the channel as well. I try to put out multiple videos every single week. And if you guys want to watch me play some Honkai Star Rail, you can go and check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Zeniton, where I stream pretty much every single day. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, thank you all good once more for watching this video. And until I see you guys in the next one, uh, bye. <laughs>